Stargate Atlantis, or aka SGA, is a spin-off television series of Stargate SG-1. The story of Stargate Atlantis follows the events from SG-1's end of 7th season, titled Lost City, and the first episode on season 8, titled New Order. Yeah, I like that band. Whatever happened to that band? In the 7th season titled Lost City Part 2, the SG-1 gang discovered a new outpost in an icy place called Antarctica with a powerful weapon control chair, you know the episode where Jack O'Neill goes brand stock on us, which leads us to the pilot episode to Stargate Atlantis where Daniel Jackson discovers the location to Atlantis, hence the dramatic zoom on his face. Some of you folks might recognise these fine actors from SG-1, such as Paul McGillian who appeared on Season 1 Episode 10, playing a character named Ernest Letfield, a younger version of course, Tori Higginson, David Hewlett and Joel Flanagan, who appeared in conjunction with SG-1 and SGA, you know crisscrossing from one place to another, as their respective character roles. The show has ended on our television screens from 2004 to 2009, and it gave us 5 seasons with 100 episodes. As usual, I'll be looking into main actors past and present acting roles which you may or may not know. Make sure not to forget to click that like button at the end if you found this video entertaining. So without further ado, let us begin shall we? First on our list at number 6 is Dr. Beckett, who was played by Paul McGillian, who was born on January the 5th, 1969, crediting 63 episodes from season 1 to season 5. Yes, this is McGillian, not him. In the year 1994, in an episode of comedy crime drama Their Comish, in the episode Ghost, you know, woo, who starred Michael Chiklis as the main man. Here we see McGillian on a wheelchair with a neck brace, looking somewhat injured. Actually, in the next scene, the police put him in a closet and scared the heebie jeebies out of him. As you can see, the deceiving toe rag got miraculously healed. Such a waffling con artist. It's a Sliding along to 1996 where he appeared in an episode of season 2 episode 9 in the sci-fi television series Sliders. <laughs> did you see what I did there? Sliding along. <coughs> Who's also included in this episode the late soul singer Isaac Hayes. Here you can see McGillian playing as a police officer who captures the professor and Rembrandt. Who's supposedly going to commit a crime in the future? Yes I know. <coughs> Minority Report. Mind you this came out before the movie. It's Mulder and Scully TV show. X-Files. Appearing in season 4 episode 20 titled Small Potatoes. It's the episode where all the parents who are making a complaint to the hospital fail to our doctor, like you know McGillian doing right now, about how their baby's born with a tail. Nevertheless it seems it's not the doctor's doing, but in fact a janitor, aka a plumber, who can shape shift. Oh come on is that quite necessary, some of us are eating. Oh hello. Racking on, and also happens to have the hots for Scully, getting the cue mate, wooing her with a bottle of wine, impersonating Fox Bottle of course, I mean maybe yes maybe no, I don't know. That's it, nice bottle of wine should do the trick. It's the year 2001 where he had a brief role playing the role as a police captain in this action thriller sci-fi movie Replicant, which also includes Daryl Dixon's brother, you know the guy from Walking Dead? Moo Dixon! How ironic, one of his armies in the bandage. Yondu is being tormented by a serial killer who robbed Van Damme place. Luckily for Yondu he meets the friends who have the DNA of Van Damme, clone another Van Damme, so that they can use the clone and train him up and hunt down the original Van Damme. Confusing eh? Van Damme it is. Moving on to 2009 on Action Crime Drama 24 in Season 7 Episode 23. Here McGillian portrays as some evil biological doctor who tries to induce Jack Bauer to a long beauty sleep. You sleepy beauty! So that he can extract some sort of pathogen aka organisms which causes disease from his organs so that they can produce a bioweapon. It's up to Bauer to stop them otherwise they're gonna use his fluid juice causing havoc to the world. Will he defeat the terrorist? Well he's got one hour to do it. Coming away from playing a bad guy Gillian is playing a deadbeat private detective in the superhero action adventure television series The Flash, appearing on three occasions from season 4 to season 5, who offers the stretch pants man a job, needing his assistance. Do I think that guy has a striking resemblance to Jim Carrey? Comment down below. Right, I'm going to end Mac Gillian's acting role here, where he appeared in six episodes in this light comedy drama Firefly Lane, playing a father to the younger version of Sarah Chalk character who's having a good time being a lazy slob, who likes to sit most part of the day eating snacks and watching TV. That's what I like to do. Right, who's next? Moving on to number 5 is Elizabeth Weir who was played by Tori Higginson who was born on December the 6th 1969, crediting 65 episodes from season 1 to season 4. This is Tori, 1992 in an episode on crime horror television series Forever Night, on season 1 episode 4, titled Last Act. Tori is playing an old flame, 
literally, to that night dude, who both of them happens to be vampires. As you saw in the previous scene, she got burned to smithereens, but somehow in this scene she appears luring her own flame to the sunlight, giving it, oh come on, come with me, join me to the light, oh please, you know you want to. Luckily, Night Rider came to his senses and thought I have this BS, better luck next time. Go on, sling your hook. Yes, it's 1994, where she appeared in the short-lived crime sci-fi action television series, Tech War, along with the creator of the show, William Shatner. Yes, he created the show. He even wrote novels about it. Nine in total. In fact, Tech War, Tech Lords, Tech Lab, Tech Vengeance, Tech Secret, Tech Power, Tech Money, Tech Kill, and Tech Net. You wouldn't believe it in the next scene, the bloke trying to hit William Shatner. Oh yeah, yeah, do you honestly think you can outpunch the creator of the show, who is smaller than you, eh? Eh? Take that! What blonger? Oh, look at this, who would have thought? Cause I didn't know she had a brief role playing a nurse in this 1996 with a staggering 9 Academy Awards winning movie, The English Patient, of course. Here she is transporting a severely burnt unknown English patient to her safety away from mine infested area. Well, little does she know, it's, you know, oh, he who must not be named. Do you know yet? Of course, it's Lord Voldemort that's been shipping from one place to another. Abracadabra, I think. Yes, I know, it's quite daunting to have the world's most evil wizard within your presence. Well, this is a spin-off to 1990s television show Highlander the series, named Highlander the Raven. Woman version, of course. Unfortunately, this show was short-lived. I wonder why. Here, Tori is playing a cop who's after a thief who stole some valuable jewellery, which leads them to this trail, a super blonde Alisa Milano doppelganger. Wait a minute, is she gonna... No, no, she wasn't. Small spot. My guess, she hid the jewellery in the bathtub. If, of course, she stole them, She's probably sitting on it right now. In that case, you might as well keep them. Zooming ahead to 2015, where she made a guest appearance in eight episodes from season one to season three in the sci-fi action mystery television series, Dark Matter, portraying as Commander Truffolt, or Truffolt. Here she's telling off, or laying down who's the boss, to that bloke who could well be the next actor to play William Riker, if he ever gets the role, or depending on if they make a new Star Trek The Next Generation. What do you think? Comment down below. Finally, I'm going to end it here for Tori, where she's regulated this hospital drama television series, Transplant. It's basically about that injured looking guy, who is from Syria and works as a takeaway restaurant waiter slash chef, who used to be a doctor in Syria, suddenly saves few lives after when a truck crashes into his bounty house. For some miraculous reasons, he's a doctor in their hospital. Proceed to the next person, please. Moving on to number 4, it's Ronan Dex, who was played by Jason Momoa. Born on August the 1st, 1979, credited 78 episodes from season 2 to season 5. Jason first debuted on our television screens way back in 1999 on one of the most popular TV shows, globally I would say, Baywatch, Hawaii. Credited 44 episodes from season 10 to season 11. Yes, I know he seems unrecognizable without his long wavy hair and caveman beard. This is him entering like a catwalk model. Surprise, surprise, if you didn't know, he used to be a model. In the next scene, there seems to be some kind of a mix up on their luggage, or aka baggage for our friends across the pond. Sorry, no problem. From being a lifeguard to a bartender in this 2004 romance drama television series, North Shore, mixing loads of cocktail of alcohols at the Grand Wimia Hotel on a sunny Hawaiian beach location. Oh yes, what else can you ask for? Sun, sea, the view? Oh yes. And listening to that blonde waitress yapping about her life story. Someone please give me some earplugs. Is he actually enjoying that? Oh well, wherever floats your boat. Here's another television show he appeared in, in which was widely known around the world, Game of Thrones, portraying as Carl Drogo, credited 10 episodes from season 1 to season 2. In this scene, he arrives late to check out his wife-to-be in the future. Hurry up, he hasn't got all day. Glaring at her with his piercing laser beam eyes, doesn't say a single word. Nada. And scrubs like Speedy Gonzalez. Arriba, arriba, andale, andale, arriba. Mind you, I wasn't sure what he was looking at. Do you know what I mean? This is him in the year 2014, where he plays a character named Philip Coppice or Coppers, or Coppers, in the thriller television drama Their Red Road, credited two seasons with 12 episodes. In here, he's telling them kids, you try to play cowboys and Indians with a 4x2 timber? The boy goes, we are, we are Indians. He buggles off nicking their 4x2, walking like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Ho! Yes, as if you didn't know, this is Jason portrayed as Aquaman in the superhero action movie Justice League, in which he also portrays the same character in, take a deep breath, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice 2016, Aquaman 2018, The Lego Movie 2, the second part 2019, and Zack Snyder's Justice League 2021. Oh, look at them, the best buddies now, innit? You can kiss and make up now since you broke the ice. I hear you can talk to 
fish. He probably kisses like a fish as well. It's the year 2016 where he appeared and reunited with Paul McGillian in this history adventure drama Frontier, crediting 18 episodes from season 1 to season 3. If you like fighting with blood spurting out like oozing, you know, oozing, then this is for you. Here, Jason portrays as an outlaw named Declan Harp, who's looking to take over Hudson Bay Fur Company's riches, like the ones he's wearing right now. <laughs> Don't worry, he didn't mean it. They're actually buddies like him and Batman. Okay, I'm gonna end it here for him. Where he appeared or currently appearing as of date of this video being uploaded in this dystopian future sci-fi television series, C. As you can see, <laughs> Jason and his crew are running away from that nasty looking guy who you wouldn't want to mess around with. Oh yes, he's doing the Indiana Jones here. Nah, huh? oh well. Next! Next on number 3 is Doctor, not another Doctor, Doctor Rodney McKay, who was played by David Hewlett, who was born on April the 18th, 1968, credited 99 episodes from season 1 to season 5. Don't laugh, bless him, don't laugh. This is the 16 year old Hewlett in 1984 in an episode on The Edison Twins on season 1 titled Delinquent. Here you can see Hewlett is being a brat who starts off bullying and tries to have a scuffle with a new boy who has historical record of committing juvenile offences. I mean, what's our fight for, eh? Well, donut. Seeing that he got slammed to the fence, he gets embarrassed and gives the false statement to the police. Seeing that he saw the blue spot jacket kid committed arson at an empty warehouse. Will Jack and Jill who went up the hill prove him wrong? Well, ain't that the police officer's job? See, that's when I saw Mike. Moving on to 1991, it's Cats and Dog, aka Rin Tin Tin, K9 Cop. I'll let you decide which is which. Anyway, this is him. <laughs> oh, what the heck? I mean, <laughs> no, 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 come on, don't laugh. Well, this is him crediting three occasions from season 4 to season 5, playing, guess what, another bully. But this time, bullying his granddad, who went to the local grocery shop to buy some foods, using his pension money, I suppose. Look at him, having no respect for the elderly, youngsters these days. I mean, youngsters those days. You could say this might be Hewlett's big break when he cast on and off along with the late David Carradine in this action crime television series, Cop Through the Legend Continues. This is him playing a forensic doctor, and here comes along that guy from Heartland, Tim Fleming, who makes it dead clear who he is. Anyway, he goes to see Hewlett to help him out on a vital investigation to clear his father, David Carradine, name, who has been held in police custody for a crime he didn't commit. Ring any bells, Hewlett? It's 1996, where he appeared from season 1 to season 5, crediting 73 episodes in this drama television series, Traders. Here he gets interviewed by that bird, Bianca or Bolivian from the 1983 movie Video Drug and the late Bruce Gray, looking very nervous and edgy. I mean, I can understand the feeling when you go for a job interview. I'm sure everyone can. He eventually does get the job. How do I know? Well, he does credit 73 episodes. You don't need to be Einstein to figure that out. This is him in 1997, along with that lady from Star Trek DS9, Esri Dax, in this horror mystery movie Cube, where six complete strangers place in an endless maze teaming up together to figure out how to get the hell out of that place. Mind you, if anyone ever needed someone to play Quentin Tarantino, he could well play that role. Yes, no, maybe, huh? I don't know. Fast forward into 2015, where he credited five episodes in this sci-fi mystery drama, Dark Matter. Not again. This is him playing an edgy, impatient character who takes no BS from anyone, especially from the recipient or recipients, who's giving them an earful to right now. Finally, this is Hewlett in 2021 on an episode of the crime drama television series Clarice. Well, hello there, Clarice. On season one, titled on the episode You Can't Rule Me, Hewlett plays a rival to Clarice's team and conducts an investigation on how one of these suspects got kaput within their custody. Hey, well, if it ain't Ruby Buckton from the Australian soap drama Home and Away, shall we proceed to the next person, please? It's number two. Boy, that was quick. And it's Taylor Emergan, who was played by Rachel Luttrell, who was born on January the 19th, 1971. Credited 99 episodes from season one to season five. This is Rachel in 1986 at the age of 15 in this television drama movie Courage, which starred the Hollywood movie legend Sophia Loren. This movie is based on a true story. Now you're gonna have to excuse me for the old retro footage look. Mind you, this is 1986. Anyway, have you guessed where she is? Nah? Oh well, I'll tell you where she is. She's the one with the white t-shirt, who answers the phone and passes it to her on-screen dad, who, surprise surprise, is none other than Lando from the Star Wars movie. Yay! It's Forever Night again. 
in 1992, where the main man doesn't get out till night time. Here we can see clear view of Rachel in Season 1 titled episode Hunters. As you can see, she's digging in to find Detective Dracula's history details. That rattled him up, didn't it? Suddenly she finds no records about him. Anyway, are they that naive? He only works during dusk till dawn. Or how about his reflection? Surely they've noticed that. Well, how about when he never eats garlic in his food? Well, a bunch of amateurs. From one Supernatural television series to another, this is Rachel in 2001 in Supernatural Fantasy television series Charmed. It's season 3, episode 20. Playing as a witch where Deadpool, Deadpool, more like Darth Maul from Star Wars movie, trying his hardest to grab her amulet from her neck. Luckily for her, her amulet has some sort of a force field that looks like a Stargate wormhole, and these three main witches came into the rescue. <laughs> I nearly said something else that rhymes with witches. Yeah, sing your hook. Fast forward into 2011, where she made one guest appearance, along with the martial arts legend, Mania Kido, Steven Seagal, in the crime action television series, True Justice, on season 1 on the episode titled Urban Warfare Part 1. Here we have Rachel portraying as a lieutenant police officer, giving the info to Katie Ryback, a battered unfortunate victim on the floor. It's season 4 on the action adventure television series Arrow, titled Code of Silence, at the year 2016. Here we have her playing as the opposite side to the Team Arrow, Hive, which means Hierarchy of International Vengeance Eliminations. Why couldn't they keep it simple? Anyway, it basically means she's a baddie with a nail gun. Oh, look at this. We're heading towards 2019, where she played a terrified woman who was running away from that homo zombie in this post-apocalyptic comedy movie, Zombieland Double Tap. Unfortunately, folks, she is there for less than 20 seconds. I guess there can only be one, eh? Right, finally I would end here for Rachel, when she appeared in the short-lived mystery television series Island, in episode 7, titled The Dark Backward. Here Rachel plays a shrink to that lady who you might recognise, in a music video named Rain Over Me, who sang by Pitbull featuring Mark Anthony. And no, I ain't gonna sing it for you. Bring in the next lot, please. Oh yes, if you're still here, then that means you've reached the other characters. This fine group of actors contributed to the show, some of them more than the others. I mean, some of them crediting more than the others. Without them, this television series would not be where it is. Where, you might ask? Well, top of my list of sci-fi TV show, of course. Shall we have a look? Heck yes. Okay then, let's go. Todd the Wraith, who played by Christopher Heyerdahl, crediting 22 episodes from season 1 to season 5. Colonel Stephen Caldwell, who was played by Mitch Pelleggi, crediting 23 episodes from season 2 to season 5. Lieutenant Aiden Ford, who was played by Rainbow Sand Franks, crediting 26 episodes from season 1 to season 5. Richard Woolsey, who was played by Robert Picardo, crediting 26 episodes from season 3 to season 5. Major Ivan Lord, who was played by Kavan Smith, crediting 29 episodes from season 2 to season 5. Dr. Jennifer Keller, who was played by Jewel State, credited 33 episodes from Season 2 to Season 5. And finally, Dr. Radek Zelenka, who was played by David Nichol, credited 55 episodes from Season 1 to Season 5. Oh boy, wasn't that quick, eh? Was, no, it wasn't? No? Alright then. Finally, we reach the number one spot, and it's Lieutenant Colonel John Shepard, who was acted by Joel Flanagan, was born on January the 5th, 1967, credited 99 episodes from Season 1 to Season 5. This is Flanagan in 1994 in the Sega video game Surgical Strike. And no, there's nothing wrong with the screens. It's just how it was back then. Fuzzy. At least the loading time was way faster than Commodore 64. And yes, I still have that one. From 1995 to 1996, Flanagan was a regular in Season 6 on the drama television series Sisters. Here Flanagan is counselling that lady from Bold and the Beautiful, Shirley Spectra. While his other half, Kate Egan from Power, is counselling that guy from Wayne's World who plays Davey. Both of the clients are supposed to be couples, just in case you're getting confused. Anyway, Flanagan is giving opposite advice to his client, to what his partner, Kate Egan, is saying to her client. I suppose opposite attracts, doesn't it? Moving on to 1998, where he made two episodes appearance in Season 2. As confusing as it may seem, he starts off being an extra in the background, minding his own business. While those two schoolgirls are yapping away in an open restaurant bar on how they would like to date an older man, like they wanted the whole world to know. Anyway, their eyes do gaze towards his direction, saying, Oh, we're from Dawson's Creek. You wanna sit next to us? We don't bite. Right. Oh, did we also measure we're 16? Nah, we'll keep that a secret then, shall we? Running away to 2002, he was cast on a short-lived legal courtroom drama television series, First Monday, credited 13 episodes. Here, Flanagan plays as a law clerk to the US Supreme Court. Oh my god, looks like he pulled there, Missy. I mean, he probably fancies Flanagan. Don't want to discriminate. 
Buzzing through to the year 2009, Flanagan appeared in an episode of the mystery sci-fi television series Warehouse 13 in season 1 episode titled Elements, where he plays as a filthy rich who likes to collect ancient artifacts. We call that an artifact. Anyway, this ancient artifact is supposed to have some sort of special powers that can control elements. In fact, there's other ancient artifacts such as rock, wind, fire and water. Whoever possesses the complete set, it will give them great powers. Who knows, maybe Captain Planet will appear. Heading on to 2012 where he was cast along with Jean-Claude Van Damme and also Osiris from Stargate television series in this action crime movie Six Bullets. Here Flanagan plays as an MMA fighter, hence the tattoo on his neck, taking pictures of his on-screen daughter, pretending to be a paparazzi. As you can see, he's not the only one taking pictures. Some stranger next to the red box is taking pictures as well. Maybe he's planning to do something up to no good. I mean, maybe yes, maybe not, I don't know. Right, I think I'll end it here for Flanagan's filmography, where he credited 80 episodes in this US soap opera hospital drama, General Hospital. As you've probably guessed, he plays as a therapist doctor, treating that lady Sean Mayan from Babylon 5. You know, she was on season 1, episode 7, titled The War Prayer. There you go folks, your favourite actors on Stargate Atlantis, then and now. Don't forget to click that like button, or if you want, why not also subscribe. As always, see you folks soon, probably two weeks time. Arriva Dirty! If you like this video, then check out my other videos. Go on, have a look.